Have you been avoiding saturated fat for fear that it will somehow clog your arteries and lead to increased risk of cardiovascular disease, even premature mortality from heart disease? I think you might want to understand the findings of this new analysis, looking at observational studies, epidemiological studies, randomized clinical trials, and also systematic reviews, finding that there's little, if any, correlation or association with consuming saturated fat and its associated increases in any cardiovascular disease related complication and death or mortality from heart disease. This is a new paper. The title here is Saturated Fat Villain and Boogeyman in the Development of Cardiovascular Disease? Question mark. And this was recently published actually in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology. So what we're gonna do is unpack and break down and talk about the three different sort of hierarchical arrangements of data. Talking first about the observational studies, then looking at the randomized controlled trials, and then looking at the systematic reviews. And again, this paper was really well done. I think it's some 60 some odd pages, a lot of references. Uh, my hat's off and I wanna commend uh, the, the researchers for putting the time in and the energy involved in looking at all of the different systematic reviews and observational studies and so forth. I learned a lot from reading this and hopefully this, this sort of condensed version of the paper in this video format will help you as well because I know this is controversial. Again, it's sort of common knowledge. People presume that if you ingest saturated fat, that it somehow selectively goes to your coronary arteries and causes stenosis or uh, and causes them to become occluded and narrowed, sort of like when you pour bacon grease down your drain and it clogs the pipes. Well, there's a lot of inconsistencies and logical flaws and scientific or biological flaws baked in tacitly implied in that argument. And it's worth mentioning that coronary artery disease and cardiovascular disease specifically, or generally speaking, actually, is a chronic inflammatory condition. We know that various immune cells, macrophages, and oxidized LDL, there's multiple uh, underlying pathophysiologic changes above and beyond just sort of fat sticking to some the lumen of the endothelium. There's a lot more going on here. So again, Although this is prevailing knowledge, and this is the paradigm that many people ascribe to believing, uh, and therefore they change their macronutrient composition of their diet as a result of that, we need to understand when new evidence emerges and the lack of association with large uh, data sets involving, like we're gonna talk about very soon here, 330,000 people in one particular study, 30,000 in another, 7,000 in another, finding little, if any, association. And when the systematic reviews further go on and, and do a, a deeper dive and you know mathematical statistical analysis, they find inconsistent associations with consuming the thing that is supposed to be problematic and its so-called outcome, which is cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, and mortality from heart disease. So that's where we're going, friends. As always, thank you for being here. I really appreciate your comments, your subscriptions. Thank you for that like button. Thank you for sharing this with a friend if you find this information helpful. Also, we're gonna talk about exercise. We're talking about fasting. One tool that can help you kickstart your fast is berberine hydrochloride. This is a very effective natural compound that has been shown to accelerate the physiology that's linked with fasting. So if you're into time-restricted feeding, which is my preferred method of fasting, which is you start your day with food, well, not right away, but you eat earlier in the day, but you start your fast earlier in the day, you can take berberine hydrochloride with your last meal or shortly afterwards to kickstart your fast. It really works. I'll put links in the description below over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C. -E E.com, myoscience.com. Use the code podcast to save on the updated berberine accelerator formulation. This is the fasting accelerator formulation. Great uh, product. So let's get right into it and talk about the history of where did we come up with this so-called diet heart hypothesis? How is this the prevailing paradigm? Well, we need to go back to uh, the 1950s and 1960s. We've talked about Ansel Keys before on this uh, podcast over the years. We've interviewed uh, Nina Teicholz and other people, but you need to understand that Ansel Keys, although he was mm, not so scientifically rigorous with regards to his seven country study that looked at various regions in the Mediterranean. And uh, the result of that led to this formation of this hypothesis that, well, consuming fat so-called so clogs the arteries. So therefore, we should reduce fat intake in the diet and form policies around this and encourage people to have more healthy whole grains. Well, Okay, we know that wasn't as scientifically rigorous, but I do want to mention that 
not all of Ansel's work was bad. Uh, some of the Minnesota fasting and starvation experiments that he did were actually quite good. So understand that Ansel uh, did actually contribute to science in, an, in a nice way. So definitely uh, check out that fasting research. But this paper critically examines the data that led to the or origins of this misconception and combination of saturated fat. Uh, and so let's get into this. I think it's really important. So these four observational studies, again, we're going to talk about the epidemiological or observational studies. We're going to talk about the RCTs and then the systematic reviews and then get to the conclusion. So what do the observational studies find? So this observational study, known as the PEER study, the Prospective Urban Rural Epidemiological Study, the largest ever epidemiological study involving over 135,000 people from 18 different countries. So again, large data set. Now, epidemiological studies can't suss out direction of causality, right? But what they found is that there's no correlation with fat intake, irrespective of the type of fat and cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, that is an event having a heart attack or death from heart disease. No correlation. The largest epidemiological study published to date. Now, the UK Biobank study, which involves over 195,000 people, we've actually gleaned information from this data set with regards to COVID-19 outcomes. And they've, this has been great, this U UK Biobank data set. And th this particular aspect of the data set, it's similar to like NHANES here in the US, um, followed people for over 10 years and found no evidence of dietary saturated fat intake and its links with heart disease, okay? Uh, and actually substituting saturated fat for polyunsaturated fat like canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, et cetera, soy oil, actually increased risk for cardiovascular disease. And the same study also showed that substituting fat and so forth uh, for carbohydrates and starches and sugars, guess what? It increased the risk for cardiovascular disease and mortality. Now you might say, well, why is that, Mike? Remember, because cardiovascular disease and the so-called process of atherosclerosis is inflammatory in nature. It's linked with insulin resistance. And, and so we can't just say that consuming fat clogs your arteries when we know that if you're consuming processed carbohydrates, that leads to the underlying pathophysiology that creates the inflammatory milieu that clogs your arteries, okay? Now, thirdly, there was a observational study. This was uh, a Dutch study involving over 4,722 males and females and found that total saturated fat was not associated with cardiovascular disease. Now for the randomized control trials. We know that the RCTs are helpful. They can tease out causality and uh, demonstrate cause and effect. And so the largest of the context here, uh, we're talking about fat and so forth, the largest study looking at dietary saturated fat in heart disease was this PREDIMED study involving over 7,447 people between the ages of 55 and 80. They randomized people to three different diets. And what they found is that the Mediterranean diet, which I know is kind of loose, but it involves, you know, fish and olives and things like that. Um, what they found that the Mediterranean diet that is not necessarily low in fat or low in saturated fat, when it's supplemented with olive oil and nuts, had lower risk of cardiovascular disease related events compared to the low fat arm of the RCT. Okay, so again, the assertion here is that if, if it's the fats, particularly the saturated fats that are not necessarily totally low in a Mediterranean diet, if those fats are the problem, then how come in a randomized controlled trial where you have a intervention arm that is specifically standardized to have low fat, how come that arm actually has higher incidences of cardiovascular related events compared to the arm that is actually eating more fat? And uh, again, the Mediterranean diet, you go to you know, parts of the Mediterranean, there's lamb, there's fatty beef. It's not necessarily completely devoid of red meat that is uh, so-called high in saturated fat. Okay. Now, I, I'm not going to read all, uh, and there, there are several other randomized control trials that are talked about that are noteworthy, but I know you're not a statistician and so forth. And so let's get into the main findings here from the systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And so what the authors want to say here is findings from the studies on the association between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease in the early and mid part of the past decade have been confirmed by recent studies. A narrative review of 19 meta-analysis, randomized controlled trials, and observational studies found no association between saturated fat consumption and cardiovascular disease. The meta-analysis of observational studies report in this review found no association between saturated fat intake and coronary heart disease, while meta-analysis of the randomized controlled trials reported in the review were inconsistent but tended to show lack of association. 
The conclusion was that the strength of evidence for the recommendation to limit saturated fat for coronary heart disease prevention may be outdated and is in need of a reevaluation. So I think that's really important. Uh, and they go on and talk about all the all the different aspects here and get into a lot of uh, different things. But I think this is important, this sentence here, a review of 28 randomized controlled trials and 11 meta-analyses that examined diet and cardiovascular disease concluded that the preponderance of evidence indicates that low-fat diets do not reduce cardiovascular events or mortality. And they go on to then talk about why it's important that as this research shows inconsistent conclusions, especially with regard to these randomized control trials, the observational or epidemiological data, that we challenge the current paradigm in wake of this new evidence and the inconsistent observations and research. They go on to say in the discussion, the purpose of this comprehensive review was to critically examine the currently available scientific evidence on the association between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease, which will have implications for future dietary recommendations to reduce cardiovascular disease risk events and mortality. Our investigation expands upon prior investigations, investigating the association between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease, and adds to a growing body of evidence showing that saturated fat has no significant impact on cardiovascular disease and outcomes. The preponderance of evidence from meta-analyses and observational studies and clinical trials do not support the dietary recommendations to limit saturated fat to reduce the clinical cardiovascular risk and events and mortality. In fact, scientific evidence shows that the advice to remove saturated fat from diets has paradoxically increased cardiovascular risk. Okay, so they finish off here saying, it is evident that although the image of coronary arteries as kitchen pipes clogged with saturated fat, heart attacks is simple, familiar, and evocative, but it is plain wrong. They say this is captured well in the following statement. Saturated fat does not clog the arteries. Coronary heart disease is a chronic inflammatory condition, the risk of which can be effectively reduced from healthy dietary intervention. So I think it's important to understand that there's a preponderance of evidence suggesting that consuming saturated fat does not in fact increase your risk for developing a future coronary artery related event or cardiovascular disease and increase your risk of mortality. So I do want to thank you all for being here. Of course, thanks for sharing this video. And I will put this paper in the description. Again, the title here, I think it's important. A lot of people were sharing this over on Instagram, on social media, is Saturated Fat Villain and Boogeyman in the Development of Cardiovascular Disease. This was published again in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology. So as always, friends, I think data is important. Facts matter. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you got some value out of this information and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Take care. Bye now.